Hello and welcome to Tales from the Backlog. My name is Steve Boshear, and I like to fly around and apparently throw luggage out windows. Um, if you don't know this channel, this is <laughs> Shadows of Arconia, where we like to play tabletop role-playing games. On Friday nights, we have our in-person games with our ongoing stories, uh, currently featuring Worlds Without Number for Shadows of Arconia Campaign 2. Also, with a little bit of... Uh, a sporadically ongoing Cities Without Number game that we have started last month and will be continuing next month. Um, this show, however, is Tales from the Backlog. This is a remote game, which we have on Monday nights, where we try out lots and lots of different games uh, with a rotating cast of players. We are currently in episode three of a trilogy, uh, fourth episode total of Beyond the Obsidian Veil, uh, which we are fortunate enough to have... The creator uh in our cast right here uh Wait, maxwell durbin tan tell us of this veil of obsidian which sounds heavy and hard to wear yes yes it is quite heavy to wear um welcome wayfarers to the conclusion of beyond the obsidian veil i am maxwell durbin tan the creator of tonight's game a game powered by my developed mad system the system allows Wayfarers to face the dread of any situation using dice-specific attributes, namely body, spirit, and mind, as well as some other uh, domains that they uh, get to roll and be um, and just use. Um, but yeah, but before we continue, I want to extend my gratitude to A Shipwright for the beautiful art, um, Steve for allowing me to play test tonight's game on Tales from the Backlog, Matt, Mia, Cindy and Steve, uh, for being a part of this journey. Um, you all have done such a beautiful job. Um, for those interested in purchasing Beyond to add to your collection of TTRPGs, the book is still in development, but you can follow me on social media under Maxwell underscore A underscore Durbin, that's D-U-R-B-I-N for, uh, for updates. Um, and that's, that's the, that's the end of my, my little, uh, my little spiel. I got um, one, I got one to add to your acknowledgements. Uh, what's up? I believe we are using, uh, tokens from forgotten dash adventures.net tonight, just like last week. Absolutely. As well as the music, music from, uh, motion ray. Um, yes. Wonderful. Uh, yes. All right. Wayfarers without further ado, let's recap. So. Ensnared in a complex tale of choices, our wayfarers encountered representatives of chaos, creation, and order. Chaos manifested as resistance fighters seeking to overthrow the triarchic kings responsible for the oppression and genocide of Mithril's minority population. However, recognizing a higher calling, you declined Ricky Moranis' invitation to ally with Bone King. Soon after, you lay witness to the annihilation of these resistance fighters as the Sendario Navy lay waste to the Reapers, bringing you face to face with the spokesperson for the Lords of Order, the youngest Triarchic King, Lord Atreus Sendrick. After a conversation, Lord Sendrick informed you that to reach the Temple of the Digital Gods, you must venture into the depths of the Last Sea and provided you with a submersible. The next day, they expelled you from the vessel indifferent to your identity as it conflicted with their greater wartime responsibilities. Now, aboard your ship, a revelation struck you during a conversation with a freed Ishmael. This world is the inaugural iteration of a game system, perpetually seeking its purpose through the question, what am I for? The hearthstone you discovered is a dormant D20 within Kayami. Ishmael's wife transformed mechanical fox. The D20 has selected you to help discern this answer. Throughout its existence, it has chosen its fate, aligning with one of the three tenets of the Aether. Chaos, creation, or order. But was not satisfied with any of these, uh, uh, the, these tenets. You opted to leave Bo and Kiyami on the breadwinner, seeking answers from the Lords of Order by descending into the Titan beneath the capital. After posing your questions to the digital gods connected to the great machine within the titan's head, Annika asked if they would relinquish 
the hearthstone to the lords of order or sorry the lords of chaos this question broke them damn it annika they never have the never have the lords of order been given responsibility to choose other than to determine the validity between right and wrong but with the flip of a coin their systems froze defying all odds the lords of order conceded and allowed the lord of chaos to locate and seize the hearthstone so wayfarers Standing before the digital gods under the last sea beneath Sindario's capital, you feel a sense of consciousness descend in this moment. A moment filled with mystery, with adventure, and with dread. Steve? The weight of our stories often settle solemnly on a single person. All tales begin neither at their beginning nor their end. Such is the state of the stories we encounter in the intricate threads of the Aether. Grand, magnificent, and unfathomable. Our candle keeper is the weaver of this cosmic loom, guiding the needle of fate through the tapestry of the expanse. Here in this realm do we journey through limitless possibilities and singular dreams. Welcome, kindred spirits, to the Aether. Welcome to the worlds beyond the Obsidian Veil. Tick, a memory. A storm broods over Centralia, cloaking the world in shadows. Lightning violently tears across the heavens while rain pours relentlessly on distorted streets. We cut to a cozy interior setting, Mia's attic, a haven of rest from the rest of your life where you get, gather to play, to relax, and generally to hang out. You are all gathered together, Ivan with you, and you're engrossed in a game, an intense game. Battle maps are set before you as you each roll to defeat an undead creature. Three gods hang at the corners of a dead titan's cranium. Your minis, a small toy amongst the immense battlefield. Ivan pauses, looking at each of you, then catches his own reflection in a nearby mirror seeing himself as he imagines, imagines himself in the world that you're all creating. Tick. The scene shifts to the aftermath of the game. Cold pizza boxes are strewn across the table, the atmosphere more relaxed. You are now just friends in a living room sharing conversation and laughter. The muffled sounds of a TV show drifts up from Mia's parents uh, watching downstairs. The distant crackle of laughter erupts as you hear. You've turned into the shoreline. Welcome, citizens of the Bay. Our next song is from Denmare's own Gregarious Gabe and his new album, Moonlight Dance. Ivan listens, then tears corner off a pizza slice, picks up a d20, studying it. Why do we play these games? He looks at each of you. What does Ivan see? If you can please describe your form on Earth. Annika, we'll start with you. Uh, good question. <laughs> uh, he sees a 20-something uh, young lady um, uh, with her uh, hair in two braids. She uh, wears uh, some gothic outfits for the most part and dark makeup. That's that's all I got for you. <laughs> like, yeah, it was good. Matt. Um, ironically, you see a uh, another character in gothic clothing and long hair and makeup. Mm -hmm. uh, Godric's earthly form is actually also a female, mm -hmm. a teenager who would rather be anywhere else but home. Cindy. Um, I have 
with just a young woman wearing jeans and a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Short hair. Okay. Steve? Definitely the youngest. Um, probably 14 at the oldest. Um, uh, wearing dirty jeans and probably the same t-shirt I was wearing at the last game. Um, I ate more of the pizza than anyone else. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's okay. What I work at the pizza delivery place, so you know I get a discount. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I'm the one that snuck in some alcohol. Yeah. I had some of that too. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I still sell my mom's beer. She won't miss it. She's got plenty. You can sleep on the couch. It's up here uh, if you want, Steve. That's super nice, and I probably do sometimes, but other times I'm just going to do it. Mm -hmm. Like a wraith. Anyway, you hear Ivan say, what is the purpose of this, of these tabletop games that we play? You're the one that wanted to play, Ivan. I know, I know, but I'm just... I'm curious. Creativity, all... escapism? I mean, could be. It could be. I just like hanging out with you guys and getting drunk and, you know, not worrying about real life. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I think there's something more to this than. <clears throat> there's not. I think. I will say, I am thankful that you have all brought me to your, to your table to hang out. You have all been very kind. To me. Is, isn't this your table? Uh, this is uh, Mia's. Oh. I don't know how many times I've came here, but I, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I, this isn't well, Being the oldest, I've got a great setup. I, I don't know. I thought this was your house and or both of you lived here. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. I don't know. I have my theories about tabletop. And I boiled it down to this. They thrive on three core elements. Chaos, Here we go. creation, and order. I mean, we've all reveled in chaos. We've descended into arcane, uh, anarchy and bloodshed, becoming murder hobos. Others find solace in creation. I mean, we love to elaborate narratives, um, sometimes at the expense of each other's own stories. Steve, and then is, there are... Steve has fallen asleep and he's snoring. Yep. And then there it's are... the youngest snore. I throw like a popcorn at him. <laughs> Good. And then there are those who seek order. And Steve, you might want to remember this. Yeah. Never become this person. A person who enforces rules and games. A rules lawyer, if you will. Okay. The reality is more than that, though. A game needs all three to survive. To sustain its magic. Not one. Not two, Steve. But all three. But also, maybe a touch of something more. He holds up the D20 up to his eye. So four things, then. It needs us. Tick. Does it, we really, cut. Does it really need you, Ivan? We cut to the battle below the last sea. The Titan's cranium is a place of mechanical marvels and supernatural dread encased in slithering coils. Darkness begins to engulf the room, drawing your attention to emerging shapes from the gloom. In the comics, they are called devourers, creatures of nightmares that feed on the memories of fallen wayfarers. They are large, centipede-like monsters, each carrying yellow spheres, souls, or memories on their backs. A portal splits the void, revealing the breadwinner on the other side, and from it emerges the Bone King, the Lord of Chaos. <clears throat> Skin is like torn parchment pulled back to reveal the quivering rawness of muscle. His robes are a tapestry of red, as if painted with fresh blood. 
Every piece of his attire, from crown to mask, is sculpted from bone. Swords pierce his body, their blades emerging from flesh as if a part of him. Accompanying him are three devourers, writhing in and around him, attached to three reavers at his feet, each chanting the ritual of ascension that allowed you to flee Earth into the Aether. And just as quickly as they were there, they disappeared. You see the scene shift focus to Bo, dying at the bones, uh, Bone King's feet, and Kiyami, whose mechanical form is crushed in the Bone King's grip, revealing the Hearthstone. You see the Bone King's gaze shift upwards towards the three digital uh, titans, the Lords of Order, hovering in stasis above you, but not before you catch his eye and those of his devourers. You hear a chilling voice resonate, not from him, but from where the three reavers once stood. Come soon, then. We need their memories, their experiences. We know, we need to know how to end this cycle once and for all. The Lord of Chaos knows. He knows that you were not the first, nor will be the last iteration of yourselves. But you each hold memories within you of a dozen lifetimes that have experienced the Hearthstone's decision time and again. He wants to know you feel how he can close the cycle of reincarnation once and for all for his favor. So, as we go into this battle, the three Reavers have become invisible. The Devourers above you are about to descend, and you see the Bone King begin to ignite the Hearthstone. The stone beginning to bleed a pool of colors like wet paint dripping on canvas. Wayfarers, as we step into count combat, are we going fast or are we going slow? So there's seven enemies. Bone King is wearing, or has the Hearthstone and, uh, oh wait, no, he already crushed our Fox Lady. Yeah. Uh, and when you came through, did it look like my ship was, with, like, fucked up in any way, shape, or form? Um, his body is covering the portal behind him. You can see the uh, the sh uh, the top of the ship, um, the deck of the ship, uh, pristine. But you don't really know because you can't see the either side or really what's going on. Okay. Going slow. Okay. Slow. Also slow. Uh, I think I am like emotionally. I want to go fast, but technically I'm go slow. And both of those are right answers for my character. Okay. Uh, I think he's gonna go slow. Okay. Um. So that is slow for everyone. Um. Yeah, how far he, away is the Bone King from me? Like, how, how far do I have to move in order to get in range of shooting? He is considered three zones away from you. Um, so okay. you would need to... Um, are we re I'm sorry, are we ready for the map? Yeah, we can pull up the map. So I see Jogger here. Yep. And Bone King here. Mm -hmm. uh, the creatures that I just pulled away are the Reavers because they just turned invisible. Uh, so you cannot see them. Um, the three crystals that you see are the um, the God, uh, are the Lord's Order um, just remaining up above. There are two serpentine um, uh, creatures to the left and to the right of you. Um, yeah, you would need to cover some distance before you uh, reach the Bone King. So we can't go to the middle, right? That's a that's a hole. That is a huge hole where the Great Machine is. Right, and then the serpents are bad guys, but the crystals are the lower. So, yeah, the Lords of Order are currently in stasis. They are not moving. Right. All uh, right. So yeah. the 
the Bone King does go first. Um, actually, all of the enemies go first. Um, the Devourers are going to um, move one, two, and um, go in. Actually, they can only move once. Uh, they are going to move close to um, Bones and Annika. Um, this one is just going to move right over here. And the Bone King, what he's going to do, if somebody can roll me a d6, uh, I'm going to say Bones, if you can roll me a d6. Sure. Right, didn't do that. There we go. That is a four. Um, okay. You see creature. You well, first of all, you see the hearthstone just begin to pulse. And from the pools of color you see as the Bone King slashes the air as this red rift just cut into the world um, in an impossible way. Um, as pools of color begin to bleed from uh, from this base, turning that immediate um, area into monochrome. Um, and you see from it uh, this creature that Godric, Annika, Arden, that you've seen before, this slimy creature, this gooey uh, monstrosity, this abomination, step out, being birthed from the worlds beyond the Aether. Okay, that is all that the Bone King can do. Um, the Reavers are staying close beside the Bone King. Those that are going slow <coughs> uh, we should focus one side and, and move around the circle together. Great idea. Um, you said that okay. this is where the machine is. This is where the great, yeah, the great machine is at the center. Now it's a whole. I don't know what this lock icon is. Okay. Uh, I don't every, every time I click, you know, it pops up. But anyway, uh, so it's. You said it's a hole. Um, could I fly across it? Is the machine in the way? Could I fly over it? The Great Machine is a huge item. You would need to cover, um, I'll say, three spaces to get on top uh, or at the, at the center of, uh, of this sphere. Okay. Um, but could I fly, let's say I were to fly uh, just around the machine but still over the hole. Is that doable? Like, um, does this you... ship's wheel represent where the machine actually is? Right, that that's where the machine is. Uh, if you're, I, I see where you're, uh, where you're going, Arden. You would end up right here from where you were. Um, three okay. spaces, uh, yeah, over to this side. That is where you 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 can remain um, if you use your uh, two action points with your additional uh, movement. I would land. actually prefer to be here if that's about the same distance. Yes, actually, that is that is the same distance. Okay. Um, yeah, I will spend. I have my thingy that lets me uh, move an extra thing. Lightfoot. I can perform yeah. an extra move action without spending additional AP. So for one action point, I move twice. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will stay here. Oh, I have a whole other. That's all I'm gonna do for now. Okay. So I, okay. I gained two action points for taking for moving slow, and I spent mm -hmm. one. So I'm at I'm at one. Okay. Uh, you started off with uh, three action points. Oh, that's right. So I'm at uh, four. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, we still have Annika, Godric, and Bones. Um, Ishmael and uh, actually Bo so is not there. Ishmael is going to uh, remain where he's at. Arden, uh, let's focus the scan on the left and get around. Um, 
I'm going to, I assume we have to, to even get around this guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take two shots at him. The devourer in front of you, this, here, let me, let me, let me. To the, to the north of us, yeah, that guy. That guy, okay. Yep. That will guy? Yeah, that will guy. That guy. <laughs> so that means that, uh, since I'm doing two shots, I do both of the D6. Um, and you are striking uh, that devourer with a uh, dread of a D8. Okay. Uh, I'm going to roll both sixes together, but they're separate. Hold him. Uh, the warrior's war roar is... Is that an action? I can't... It that is an action point. That is an action point. But it, could I do it in addition to attacking, or is it just... Uh, uh, if you want, since you did go slow, you do have two actions. That that's right, that's right. Okay, so then I am going to do the warrior's war first. Okay. Uh, and, and I'm just, you know, I'm pissed anyway. So, uh, and I'm going to fire at this guy with both shots. Copy and that. here are my two d6s. <laughs> hmm. Uh, and he said D8 was the third red. That is correct. Uh, there's there's an order. Uh, a miss and a hit. A miss and a hit. All right. So that is two damage to the um, one devourer as it hisses um, and uh, recoils from the um, Oh, strike. I'm sorry. I have the D4 for my first roll. Uh, for the, the, uh, let's see if that beats it. The warriors were. I forgot about um, gonna... Those that are uh, your. Oh, this this devourer is technically within your zone, so it does get a minus to your um, to your adventure die on its next roll. Um, and any of your uh, allies within the roll uh, within your zone get a bonus adventure die. So any action that anyone does on their next uh on the next roll uh get a bonus to their adventure back still didn't beat him so yeah only one hit copy that um so that was a total of just two points and then uh here, nine, oh. um and then i get one teamwork point for miss right from miss that is correct <laughs> cool uh and then uh, I want to, you know what? I'm just gonna stand my ground. I'm good there. Okay. You are currently engaged with this creature. Yeah, but I'm I'm not next to him, right? I'm a little bit oh, away. Oh, you wanna go, you wanna be close to him? No, I don't wanna be close to him. I wanna be kind of where I was. Copy that. So we'll put you nearby him. Yeah. So that's a couple of spaces away from him. I'm a ranged fighter, so. Copy that. All right, we got Annika and Bones. Uh, do you mind if I go ahead, Bones? No, go for it. Uh, I will move to the, you said the devourer, and uh, try and hit it with my um, weapon. The one close to you, right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's a D8 for my strike plus the D4 uh, bonus. Okay, and then it's the D8 Dread. Oh, that's not great. Your, your D4 exploded though, right? Or no, the Adventure Die doesn't explode, or does? Uh, the Adventure Die does, does, does oh. explode, yeah. All right, let me roll a D4 again real quick. Okay, right. hey, 30 point. All right. Okay, so you get uh, that. So here is the Dread. Oh, poof. Okay, well, I, I beat that. Yeah, you do, <laughs> um, which, takes three damage from that um as you uh run up uh, ahead you see um it's viper like uh, uh mouth uh go to uh strike at you as you hit it uh beneath its jaw uh with your mace um the creature just uh howling in pain um all righty bones <laughs> i'd like to use this marked prey the target 
Uh, let me see if I can read this in the dark. Uh, target is considered vulnerable vulnerable to your attacks for three rounds. Okay, that is an action uh, feature. Um, you will need to roll a. Uh, it's free, so you don't. It doesn't cost you any um, any uh, AP, but you do need to roll your mind against the creature's red. Okay. Uh, all right. I will roll my mind, and the dread for that is six, and d six as well. That is a d eight for this creature. Okay. Well, that's not a very good roll, Bones. But, hey. you know, that will do, I guess. All right. Low and steady with these uh, with these attacks. Um, okay. Uh, this... And so that uses an action, right? Uh, no. That does not use an action. Um, marked it doesn't prey. Use yeah, marked prey. You select um, the creature as your quarry, um, and it is considered vulnerable. So. Okay, um, so I can still move up and hit it with my hammer. That is, is that... correct. You can. Um, that is one action point to move towards it. From where you're at. Okay, there we are. <clears throat> and then I rolled two D6s. That is correct. Attack, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is this using your your daggers for multi attack? No, the hammer. Okay, the hammer. Got well, the hammer is big. Not. Is the hammer also a d6? Uh, the hammer uh, is a d. Yeah, the hammer is a d6 um, against the dread die, um, and it's not. Sorry, it's not with a uh, additional d6. This is with a uh, with your adventure die d4. Got it. Okay. Okay, five against the um, red die of a D8, minus two because it is vulnerable. I don't know how to put the minus two, but well. Oh, well, it. that is a zero. <laughs> okay, so that is five stress. Um, this devourer howls. Um, with uh, your additional uh, 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 strike as Annika uh, slams uh, her mace uh, upwards, uh, knocking the uh, creature's teeth uh, up, and you coming in, just jumping up, and slamming it with your hammer. All right, we are entering a new round. The Abomination has just arrived. Um, Wayfarers, are we going fast or slow? Slow. I'm gonna fast it this time. I'll fast. take another slow. Slow. I will also go fast this time. Bones fast. Like that. Um, all right, those who are going fast, Bones, Annika, what are you doing? I will. I will try and hit this beastie again. Copy that. All right. So here is my D8 for my strike plus the D4. Um, and D8 Dread minus two, you said, so there you go. Okay, so that is a two. Um, and yeah, then my D8 five. explodes, though. But, you know. uh, correction, uh, it is a new round, so that D4 no longer uh, uh, counts for you guys. Okay, so I still get the eight though. All right, you, you get the eight, and that does uh, explode. So roll an additional d eight. And the dread was four, so here's the eight. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Minus two. Okay. Um. That meets a target number. Um. Which I'll explain to you what that does as you um shatter uh the teeth of the of this uh devourer 
please roll me. Actually, no, this just happens. Um, that's right, that's how I designed it. It just happens. Um, okay. You see the golden sphere on its back shatter when you uh, when you strike at it. It's almost like the reverberation of your uh, strike just sends uh, this recoiling uh, uh, shake down its back as you see the sphere crack and you begin to open. And from this golden sphere, as this devourer uh, haunches, just completely exhausted and depleted, this fallen wayfarer begin to just fall on the ground and begin to stand up. It's this horrific looking uh, version of a person that has died here on this earth. And it vaguely resembles Ricky Moranis. He is before you, <sighs> right behind this devourer. Um, okay, uh, that was Bones. Uh, next on the initiative for fast uh, will be Annika. Annika, what are you doing? That was me that just went. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. It's the opposite of that. Uh, so, is this uh, new apparition a um, a threat? Um, it's it looks nice whether you. it fell to the ground or if it's standing there. It has fallen to the ground and it's uh, beginning to pick itself up looking around. Um, you see a malevolent intent um, through its eyes, specifically looking at uh, Annika, Godric, and Arya. That's enough for me. I'm gonna... Uh... I'll, I'll do marked prey on that. Can I do that more than once? Yes, uh, uh, sorry, no, you cannot. You cannot have more than one uh, quarry um, marked as your prey. Um, and then just as a reminder, at least for those that you've marked as your prey, um, you do have advantage D10 uh, to your strikes against um, any marked enemy. Um, okay. Uh, you've marked this uh, devourer as your uh, main quarry, your main enemy. You do have an advantage to, uh, to any oh, of your... Oh, the devourer is still up? The devourer is still up. It's... Oh, okay. It's I was confused on. about that. That's that's what's going on. I will right. delete it if, if it's dead. Okay. Fair enough. All right. I will hit the devourer again then. That. And that's... So that's a D10. So that's your regular uh, strike or... die with advantage D10. That means roll your uh, strike die with a d10 and take the highest oh i see how okay okay they're both six and then roll that d8 minus two because it is considered vulnerable your six exploded too oh your six did explode if you want to roll that uh six again all right I guess I'm one. That's a lot. Oh my gosh, that is a lot. Um, roll me a d4 as this creature falls dead. Okay. Two. Okay, nothing happens. Um, as this devourer just slumps, falls um, to the ground, you see the golden spears on its back dim. Um, you catch brief memories um, on just being reflected off the glass of different lives being lived. It has probably like a dozen of these different spheres um, attached to its back. And in one of them, you swear you see Arden heroically flying up uh, against this uh, creature that you're fighting. In a different time, in a different life, Arden attacked this creature and died. Uh, but you have killed it. You broke. You broken a portion of uh, history uh, and rewritten time itself. Um, okay, this devourer is now dead. Um, the only thing uh, standing in this area is the uh, fallen wayfarer. That is Ricky Moranis. Um, okay. 
Uh, we are going to the other side of the creatures that went fast. The Abomination right here is going to strike at Arden. Uh, I'm using my fade away reaction. He must... Uh, go ahead. He has to roll against my body die, and if he fails, the attempt is thwarted, and he loses an AP on his next turn. Copy that. Um, okay. He does spend all of his... Uh, okay, roll. Here we we'll go. Start with that yeah, we'll start with that roll. That's four. That explodes. Six. Okay, against the D10. Um, yeah, okay. Five. Woo! Nice. Oh, nice. Whatever nice he was uh, going to do immediately failed. Uh, I'm it, just too friggin' dazzling. Um, yeah, it goes uh, after you and you... Well, if you want to kind of explain what you do. Uh, I think, at, you know, in the realm of combat time, I'm kind of just landing here as it's running up to me. And yeah. I'm in the process of eyeing where I'm going next. Um, mm -hmm. So just at, kind of out of the corner of my eye, I see someone rushing at me. So I just sort of like flick my metal wings out and these big metallic feathers probably just hit him, brush across his face. And he yeah. he's so distracted, he can't figure out what he's doing. Brilliant. I love it. Um, Wing yeah. judo. Yeah. It it does um, not attack you, but do roll me a d8. Three. Three. Thank you. Um. Okay. You see. Ooh. Uh. Avarice Mirage. Man, it's not gonna it's not gonna affect you because um, you knocked it off its course. So roll me a d4 minus one. Uh, one or two will yeah one will be Annika, two will be Captain Godric, three will be Bones. Annika. Wait, you said d4 minus one. Yeah, so, so it, it would just be a, it, yeah, it would just be a one uh, in this case. Okay. He just said one. He just assigned one, two, and three. Yeah. Annika, your mind is filled with illusions of grandeur and riches. Around you, you see, you see gold coins just gather around you. You see the golden sphere uh, on top of the the devourer immediately begin to pop as gold coins just begin to just like almost capture you um, as they roll on the floor and start to just pile up. You lose your next turn as you immediately begin to feel this draw of, I need to collect all of these. Oh my gosh, they are beautiful. Would my unyielding belief affect that? I have advantage uh, checks against effects that would alter my mind or emotion. Hey, yo. Uh, yes, please. Uh, please roll me um, your your mind save um, against this D10. Um, and with advantage. I oh, so my advantage. mind is a D6. My mind's a D6, but it says advantage D10. I'm, uh, yeah. Which... yeah, so you roll your D6 uh, mind with uh, that D10 and take the highest. Okay. Ugh. That's not great. Okay. Against that D10. Heck, D10. So, ew, come on. Okay. Yeah, you That's lose that your next, then. You, you lose your next turn as you feel this feeling of temptation just take hold of you as you see all these beautiful gold coins oh my gosh you've never seen gold coins this beautiful start to just invade the area around you um bones you see nothing you don't know why annika is reacting the way that uh she is it's annika <laughs> okay so that's the abomination the bone king is going slow the devourer <laughs> is 
going fast, so he's just going to move once right over there. Um, Captain Godric, please roll me a d4 for this rift. Oh. One. Okay. Um, you all see... Sorry, that was a failed roll, so we get a plus. We get another one over there. Two. Oh, the... yeah, yeah. Just right. You all see... Give us our teamwork. From the rift that was opened, this three-headed creature. Did you say creature or creature? A <laughs> preacher. He starts to... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, this three-headed creature. A three-headed um, preacher. Wow. Uh, its tail is that of a snake. One head is that of... Uh, is made of obsidian. One is made out of silver. Another is made out of gold. Annika, Arden, Godric, you've seen this before. This is a myriad. Oh, yay. Man, I just want to get back to my ship. Come on, guys. <laughs> um, alrighty. Uh, that is going to go... That's going to be it for the fast goers. We're going to go for the slow. So that is Godric and Arden. Um, you guys get two actions as well as two extra HP to spend. Uh, I'll go first since I can give you a roar advantage thing, Maji. He right. is outside of your zone at the moment. Uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Where did the zone? Like, what, how do you know how far a zone is? Like, um, okay. So currently, uh, just uh, because this is uh, a huge map, split it down the middle. So literally down the middle of um, this uh, this wheel. Yeah. One side is a zone. The other is a zone. Um, because where combat is uh, occurring. Um, you would need to go, this is uh, considered out of range. That is uh, considered far, nearby. Oops. Close, and you would be within the, uh, the zone of Arden. Okay, uh, well then, Arden, if you want to go first, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I will. Um, so first, I'm going to spend an action point to do through the cracks. Um, yep. That allows me to pass through spaces occupied by enemies without triggering reaction opportunity attacks. Um, now, when, I, when we first started this scene, you described mm -hmm. the Bone King as holding the mechanical fox crushed in one hand, the chest open... And the hearthstone exposed. Correct. I'm taking it. Um, so from where you're at, you're gonna go one to get engaged with um, the Bone King, and he is a towering figure. So mm -hmm. you will need to take flight and go to take the hearthstone. Yeah. So my intention, I spent the one action point for through the crack, so he won't be able to hit me just because I'm near him, and. Um, I would like to fly, grab it, and fly the other way as far as I can go. Okay. So, <clears throat> this isn't a careful thing, so this is not going to be control. Um, this is going to be a very hasty thing, so I'm going to have you roll your body um, to attempt to capture the Hearthstone. Um, the Dread against the Bone King is a d20. Can I... I know this is shenanigans. Can I argue strike instead of body? Since it is so fast, um, but I have um, I have the monk skill, which mm -hmm. gives me uh, a bonus adventure die to strike rolls when fighting unarmed. Um, so it's a, it's a quick hand motion, right? So I can grab it. Yes, you can do that. Right. Go ahead. As long as you are able to explain to me what you're doing, I will pass. All right, here is my strike, which is a D8 plus my adventure die for my monk bonus. Ooh. Okay. Okay. That's bad. <laughs> That's a three. Um, and then D20. Mm-hmm. D20 
He's going to crit fail. Let's watch it happen. Nope, that's not what happened. You, yeah, you're, you go to fly, um, and in a quick motion, um, just strike one of the, um, uh, the swords that is attached to the Bone King's body. Ow! Um, yeah, due to your skill, the Abomination did not strike at you because, um, you left it with no reaction. Um, but the, it is going to be the, uh, Bone King the Bone King's turn as you fly up and just slam against one of the swords. Oh, I still have a, uh, I still have my slow. Oh, I'm slow. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. It, go ahead. I'm still going to go. I just gave my turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go go ahead. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, then I'm going to move north on the, the uh, map towards the new guy. And I'm going to try to clear a path for our, our my friends here. Uh, mm -hmm. Warriors Roar. And uh, dual shots again. Okay. So, sorry, just to uh, just to make sure we're understanding each other. You said towards the new guy, but you're a ranged combatant, so you don't want to be adjacent, right? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. It doesn't matter, honestly. Okay. Uh, uh, so I forgot last time that I do get a plus one on the first shot, which mm. actually would have hit with anyway. anyway. Uh, so it's. I'm gonna roll my first attack with the D4 for the roar. Okay. Five. Uh, plus fallen, one, so six. Yep. These fallen have a D4 stress. Or a uh, dread. Great. Uh, and then my second attack, three. Okay. All right. So first, I'm gonna roll both theirs at the same time. It's gonna be in order. Okay. Uh, uh, four. So I beat the first one and I beat the second one. Yeah, two, four two minus hits. two, and then two minus two. <clears throat> um, yeah, you see, uh, as you're rushing, what kind of just, um, kind of color it? Um, like gun rushing, straight out. You go here, yeah, gun straight out. Um, you see Charge. Ricky Moranis, uh, one bullet in his brain, the other in his heart, um, as he just crystallizes and shatters before you. Well, shit. Uh, he was not engaged with anyone, so nothing happens. Um, I don't okay. like him anyway. Uh, with your move that got you here, with your um, attack that left you right here. Okay. Alrighty. Um, the other slow combatants, that is going to be Bone King. Um, you see he grasps onto the um, the hearthstone, uh, seeing you uh, Arden slam into one of his uh, one of his swords and is going to do this giant swing downwards to knock you um, off kind of just kind of like swatting a fly okay uh, if you will. Uh, I would just like to say for the record, fuck these guys. <laughs> also, I forgot to give a teamwork point for my favorite. Yes. Um, okay. So, uh, roll me a dread against your defense. There is the dread, which I rolled first, uh, and there's no reason to roll anything else. <laughs> Uh, try, try it. You might explode. Hey, you I might might explode. Yeah, you might explode. You might. <laughs> Three times. Yeah. Yeah. Could happen. Didn't go. Didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, you do take uh, 12 damage. Uh, sorry, minus, uh, what was it? Minus one, I believe, because of your uh, slithery. Oh, through the cracks? No, it doesn't give me anything like that. Copy uh, that. It just avoids triggering opportunity uh, effects. Okay. So you take 12 damage as you are swatted back from a engage. That is stress, right? Too close. That is stress. Correct. Um, so you are swatted um, to near where the rift is. And you see the rift um, is just shimmering. You see portions of what looks like the beyond, um, uh, well, beyond you. Uh, through the crack and the abomination is there just hulking in front of you. Um, okay, the Myriad um, is gonna go 
Actually, you're the closest combatant there. It's gonna go there. Um, roll me a d4. Does that explode? Uh, no, this is to determine its attack. Okay. Um, you see the silver, um, the silver mask unhinge its jaw as a cloud of fog begins to encapsulate the area around you. Um, your, any combat die against, um, any targets within this area are at a disadvantage, uh, are at a step down disadvantage. Um, so that means roll um, a step down of your original die and take the lowest. Okay. Okay, so that is throughout this area. So the other half of the current uh, uh, combat zone is clouded in this thick fog. Um, we are going to go into the third round, um, which third round that vulnerable uh stasis of the previous devourer ends which it is no longer there so it doesn't matter um wakers are you going fast or slow uh fast fast <clears throat> i'll go slow not at all ha <laughs> <laughs> slow Annika, you're going uh is that code for slow that was code for I lost my turn, right? So. Oh, know. that's right. That's right. You did lose your turn. Good I'm kind of like scooping at the ground of these yeah. invisible coins. Yeah, he's like, like, I just, I quit. I didn't even want to play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm distracted. You are distracted. Uh, distracted. Dis distracted. Uh, Poppy. Annika, get your shit together. What? Um, huh? Don't you see all this wonderful gold? Copy that. Those that are going fast can go fast. Uh, um, oh, I can do this real fast. I'm just going to go use my um, my latest ability which hey brought with the level up. Storms approach. I'm spending two action points. Uh, and all enemies in my zone have the distracted condition for this round. Okay, so with how action features work, um, and I've never actually said this uh, live on stream, so how action features work, you can either spend imagination or stress to automatically succeed on your action feature. You spend the, uh, the AP, that's the, uh, the number in the middle, um, or uh, you can risk it for the biscuit and roll that attribute. So I believe for your attribute, that is a... Actually, you have, it, you have it in front of you. Yeah, it's so control. my control is D8. So I can either spend the two AP or spend uh, imagination or stress or roll control. You spend the two AP um, to activate it and you can either risk it for the biscuit by uh, rolling the attribute or spend the uh, imagination or stress um, to automatically succeed. I am spending that in imagination. Copy that. There is no reason to take a chance on this. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> so all creatures... All creatures in uh, my zone are distracted. Are distracted. And I believe that includes the Myriad, the Abomination, and the Bone King. That is correct. And since wow. I'm over here by myself, I would like for them to be distracted, please. And Good. anything hey. invisible. That's hey. Still there. <laughs> yeah. You're like, hey, look over there. Yeah, look out, guys. Isn't that your mom? <laughs> um, it's usually just the, the, what the fuck are you talking about, my mom? Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking over to, to that area like, what are you pointing at? Um, okay, you do have, since you went uh, slow, another action. You can... No, I went fast. Oh, I'm sorry, fast. I was the first person to do something. Um, okay. Uh, Godric, you are also going fast? Yeah. Um, my plan is changing a little bit because I forgot that Annika was frozen. Uh, or stop. I am going to move uh, as far as I can north towards the god, the Bone King. Um, as I'm passing the Lord up there, yep. uh, 
What does he look? Is he like crystallized as as in the little image there, or is he just like stop? Like, is he does? He, basically, is there any way that he looks like he could still be accessed or talked to? Goddard, a coin was given to him by Atreus, Lord Atreus. You've seen these Lords of Order also use similar points um, to uh, to flip it and basically decide on the whether to answer you or not. Um, you see, currently they are in stasis. Um, they are currently frozen, as if just glitching. Annika's question confounded them. They don't know how to answer, and the only way to answer was to allow the question to proceed um, in an actual way, allowing the Bone King in. Um, but if you want to try to access them, this... You have a coin. You have a coin. I forgot about the coin. Um... Yeah, could I... Could I ask them a question and then flip it for them? Um, what question are you asking? Uh, will you aid us now in this fight? And I'm gonna flip it. Okay. Roll me. I know I can get more metaphysical, but I'm in the moment. That is okay. Like, Roll me a d4. One and two is a success. Three and four is a failure. Okay. You don't see anything here uh, during this round. Does that cost an AP? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, the, I mean, you're stopping to basically uh, at, like think about this question and ask it as you yeah. flip the coin uh, and basically uh, go to catch it. But as you flip the coin and you catch it, the coin is no longer there. Um, you don't know what that means. You don't know if it succeeded or failed. Um, but nothing happens during this round uh, or the rest of this round. I hate this place. <laughs> well, uh, okay. Um, that is, I believe that was it for the fast person. <laughs> we have the Devourer stepping up, getting closer, closer to Ishmael. Is he not coming with us? Ishmael, I mean, you're you're over there. So you don't you don't really see it. And you're kind of. Uh, is he We're just gonna stand room. there and take take beating, or is he gonna run? You have no idea. He's he's over there. Uh, Bones. Okay. You, well, actually, no. You, Bones, where you're where you're at, you kind of uh, turn to look uh, at this uh, slithering uh, devourer uh, uh, go, and you see that Ishmael is currently working on something. Uh, in his hands. Uh, he's lost in his heart, and you see the devourer fast approaching. He's not paying attention at all. You don't know what's happening. Um, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So that is the Devourer. Uh, the Myriad is currently distracted. Um, I am up. Okay. The distracted condition. Where did I I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not sure it's in the current version of the book exactly what that condition does. Oh my gosh, I did not. So we're going to do Confuse. So it has a minus two to any of its uh, skill checks and features. Hey, good call. Good, good, good calling that out. Uh, well, just because I've been over here word searching it in the PDF. Yeah, uh, it is considered this uh or sorry confused confused Happy. i'm confused <laughs> um okay so yeah it is confu considered confused so any of its um actions are any of their actions uh currently are at a minus two um okay so moving along with that so the myriad uh is going to uh just 
Actually, it can see through the fog, because that is its own fog, is going to wander up to Arden and um, Arden roll me. Actually, it's gonna, uh, it's just gonna strike uh, with its tail. Uh, roll me a d4. Uh, sorry, not a d4, uh, a d8 um, against your defense. The d8 minus two against your defense. Uh, d8 is zero. Wow. Um, and then my defend is going to be more than zero. I'm not sure yeah. It is, but, uh, okay, it's four. Uh, so. Four. Oh, uh, my six. word. Great. Uh, it's eerily silent before you see this tail, this snake, uh, this topaz snake immediately go to strike at you um but it wasn't being as quiet as it thought it was uh you hear the clicking of uh of the stone beneath its feet and you know exactly where it, it's going and you kind of already guessed you've seen this creature before you kicked the fuck out of this tail once before Real hard. you don't you're not even scared of it as it descends upon you you open uh, your legs and it strikes the, the earth um, between your feet um, and it's just kind of like the staring mouth as the snake uh, um, ascends and just stares at you angrily. Um, okay, the abomination is going to uh, be wandering about. It's going to go the opposite way. Um, while the bone king... Do I get an opportunity attack on that abomination? Uh, it walked away from you. Yes, you do. Okay. Uh, actually, no. It's in the you're in the fog. Um, you have no idea uh, where it's at. Uh, okay, so for the Bone King, um, Arden, you do see the Hearthstone uh, pulsing again uh, through the the fog. You know vaguely where the the Bone Bone King's uh, body is. Uh, I'm gonna say, if you already rolled. I'm gonna say Steve, uh, roll me a d6. Okay. A one. Okay, that is a one. Another rift appears. Nothing coming through it just yet. Um, alrighty, that is the end of that round. The fog around you, Arden, dissipates. Did I go? I don't think no. so. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes, sorry, slow. <laughs> yeah, I was going slow this time. Um, I'd like to holler to the captain. Do you want me to follow you? Or there's this devourer creeping up behind us here. And Ishmael's being weird and Annika's being weird. <laughs> Shit. Uh, uh, you don't have any ranged attacks, right? You're a, you're a melee person. Well, I got a couple of daggers, but, eh. Um, yeah, keep the crew safe and uh, help, help Ishmael out for as long as he needs it. We gotta get, we gotta get everyone out of here alive. All right, I'm gonna head down towards the Devourer then. Looks like okay. it. Um, with your slow, you can get engaged with it if you'd like. I would like to do that and mark my prey. Copy that. Um, so you have advantage d10 against it. Um, Annika, the coins around you begin to disappear. They're kind of slipping from your hand before they're gone. And you look around. What the hell was that? I feel so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, Wayfarers, uh, fast or slow? Fast. Fast. Slow. Uh, so the portal that opened up in front of me, this, this, I, I'm asking this because it might actually just dictate what I do. Does it look like something I can physically stop? Like, or is it, is it just like a energy portal and there's no way I can 
stop it without you've seen it this kind of portal being closed once before with arden's obsidian dagger arden no longer has an obsidian dagger I... <sighs> but i have small, obsidian small retcon small retcon uh to our uh kind of out of game session your ring is made out of obsidian don't i have those crystal obsidian bullets as well yes you do yes you do um it's one ap to reload uh i'm gonna go slow you yep. know what fuck it i'm gonna do follow me i'm gonna take one i'm gonna use to spend one imagination to ignore initiative go first with plus two ap brilliant just brilliant. to make sure i love that um okay then Captain Godric, it is your turn. Uh, I'm going to use one action, I guess, to uh, reload the pistols with uh, the obsidian bullets. Yep. I have 10, right? So I have five in each pistol right now, basically. Yes. All right. And I am going to... I'm just going to fire both shots at the, the portal, just to make sure. Okay. This is going to be against the dread of a D8. Great. Uh, I didn't roar, so it's just straight D6s. Uh, the first one is a plus one. So four and four. Mm -hmm. Go away. And then both D8s. Eight and a one. So definitely miss the first, but definitely hit the second. I'll say I'll say this amidst the uh, the battle, um, and it's it's not you remembering it. It's more of a voice speaking through your head. Love it. Imagination powers obsidian. So you hit the rift, but if you want it to do a certain something, such as close. You would need to power that obsidian that you're shooting with imagination. Could you count the imagination point that I spent just now? Or do I need to spend another? Is that what you're saying? The ima yeah, you would need to spend another. The imagination you spent right now is to automatically succeed on um, the, uh, oh. the casting of uh, Follow Me. Great. I was just trying to shenanigan it. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to spend. I'm going to close my eyes. Get the fuck out of here portal and spend a point copy that and you see the rift as one of them uh ricochets off the side um another one uh shoots through it um you see it's almost as if this thread is closing up the rift that you're seeing and the pool of just color just wash uh, the floor in this monochromatic uh, 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 hue. Um, just literally absorbing any of the color um, in this uh, in this in this area. Um, okay. Do that, I? If I still have movement, I'm gonna move towards the bunking. Um, that was a shot, um, and then an action to do uh, follow me. Um, so no. Okay. Oh, no. No. Um, okay, so that was fast for uh, for Matt, for Captain Godric, uh, Arden, and Bones. Fast. Um, before I go, can you please do me a favor and repeat your description of this myriad? Yes, this myriad is a it's a chimera of sorts. Three heads, one obsidian one silver, one gold. Um, it, it, it seems to be shimmering in different ways as it steps into this world. Its senses are overloaded, trying to uh, reformat itself to seem more akin to this world, but because of the scar, it's fracturing and reforming uh, constantly. Its tail is a topaz uh, a serpent uh, refracturing and reforming itself constantly. Okay, thank you. Um, in that case, I would like to do an unarmed attack with my monk bonus 
to knock its obsidian head into the portal it is trying to step out of and spend <laughs> some imagination to close the portal with this thing's own head. Let's yes. fucking go. All Let's right. fucking go. So my strike is D8. I get um, bonus adventure die to strike. Okay. Yep. Oh, I got a, I missed a shot. So I do, we do have an extra teamwork from me too. That right. is correct. Okay. I'm only pointing it out because we might want to use it right now. D8 for strike. Six. Yeah. And okay. D4 adventure die is three. That's a nine total. And mm -hmm. what is the dread? The dread is a D8 uh, for this Myriad's head. Three. Okay. Um, you strike at it as the... Uh, it, and thankfully, the mask is attached but it's floating like in front of its face um in this just weird uh uh just array and you knock it uh off as it goes into the rift and you're using those imagination points you see the rift flows and it, it cost me one imagination point or two that is one one imagination point to do that um that is fucking awesome uh, you met a target number, um, and it basically eliminated one of the Myriad's um, uh, body parts. You eliminated the Obsidian Requiem, uh, which granted anybody within the zone trauma. Uh, so, good call. Ah! Says Arden. Um, all right, Arden, uh, that was your uh, action. You were going fast. That was one. Um, we are off to Bones. Okay. Um, Y'all are doing great. How many action points did I end up spending to move? Uh, your move was two. My move? Okay, so that's fine. I will swing my hammer. Swing your hammer. Hammer time. And that's the D6 and the... I used mark on that thing, right? You did mark. <laughs> I just went ahead of Okay, so the D6 and the D10. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Okay, so that is oh, against the, uh, the red of a D8. All right. And... Yes. Nice. <laughs> Um, doesn't do a whole lot of damage um, as you uh, strike it, um, but it definitely does seem uh, annoyed at you. Um, that was the point. All right, we have fast combatants. We have the Devourer here um, is going to... I get to finally play with these Devourers. You guys took out the, the last one. Um, okay. Whoops. So... Bones. You see the devourer, its jaws just unhinge and try to force itself um, around you. Uh, the mouth of this creature becoming your whole entire world. Uh, please roll a dread d8 against your defend. Is it trying to bite it's, me or grab yeah, hold me? It's gonna try to grasp you. Because I think I have, what is that, quarry? Is that the same thing? Yeah, quarry is the same thing. I have a, gosh, I can't find it right now. I, I have a bonus against it or something. Uh, quarry, you have uh, advantage D10 uh, to resist any of your quarry. Okay, so what am I rolling first then? Um, descend? Roll your defend or... with advantage D10. So the D6 and the D10, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. All right, I think I'm getting, I'm starting to get the hang of this. All right, maybe. Okay, both a three. <clears throat> Against the dread of a D8. Uh, damn. Ooh, all right. Let's roll again. The D8. Yep. Oh, oh no. Roll again. Good Lord. No. Oh, the worst order I've ever given bones in my life. How many teamwork points do we have to spend for that whole thing to have just not happened? 
Um, <laughs> you can reduce the damage that it uh, that it inflicts. Uh, so currently it's uh, what 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, which would bring you down. Um, if you want to reduce it by five or whatever to uh, to keep her at 19, so she doesn't go down. Um, well, it's also it's minus three, right, from her roll. Yeah. Uh, so it's already at 19. Yeah. And then... 22 minus 3, yeah. So we could still reduce it more. Yeah, you could still reduce it more. You could reduce it by 5. Uh, all of your teamwork points uh, to keep bones up. Uh, uh, valuable, yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, I agree. I say we. I say we spend all 5. Yeah. All right. So you take 14. Always better to keep a gun in the fight. Yeah. You take 14 I take... stress. Um, bones. Another thing with this uh, creature's uh, mem memory snare, as it's called, as its teeth wrap around you, you see portions of your memory begin to fade. I'm going to ask you, do you want the memories of your brother or the Aether to leave you? Well, I just saw my brother die, right? Your brother did die. Oh shit, they got Bo? They did. They did get Bo. Uh, oh, man. I'm way more pissed now than I should have been. Uh, yeah, um, shit. The, uh, the Aether, then. Okay. I think that, yeah, I think she just really wouldn't want to forget her brother. She could help it. You recall, in a flash of memory, you arriving at the Aether, searching your brother, and a single memory, your parents crying, asking you, help him, help him. They knew about the Aether, they just didn't do anything about it. There's probably not enough belief, enough imagination in the minds of these adults uh, to traverse through the Aether, but you believed enough that your brother was not dead. So you traversed into this world beyond. And it's fading. Why are you here? What are you doing? Bones, you have a point of trauma. A point of trauma um, does not, usually uh, conditions last um, when you use them up, uh, but trauma continues. So a point of trauma, you are currently weakened, so any body strike or shoot is decreased by a step. So if your strike is at a D6, it would now be at a D4. If it's already at a D4, you would roll your adventure die as a minus to your rolls. Okay. The bone, uh, so body, strike, and shoot are reduced by a step. All right. Okay. Um, so that is the devourer's turn. The abomination, now that the um, fog has cleared up, is going to turn around, go up to Arden. Um, that is its turn because it just went fast. The Myriad um, is going to strike at you. I'm going to have Mia, please roll me a D D4 minus. Actually, yeah, roll me a D4. It's striking at me. Yeah, it's striking at you. Fade away. It has, has a to reaction. roll against my body as a reaction. Copy that. My body is going to be D4. That's a two. And then what is it roll? It's a D or not a D ten. A D eight for the uh Miriam. Alright, well it solidly beats me. Okay. So it ignores uh your your seal. Teamwork. Yeah. Uh, but that is a teamwork point. Um okay, so Annika please roll me that uh D four. I rolled it. That was the three on the dice. That was three. 
two. Okay. Well, the Obsidian um, uh, Requiem was uh, three, but it no longer has the Obsidian Mask, uh, so it will not be uh, conducting that action feature. So nothing happens with the Myriad. Um, all right, we are going to go to those that are slow, which is Annika. Annika and the Bone King. I would like to move. That sounds and... like a dope band. Annika <laughs> and the Bone King. <laughs> and the Bone really King. Does, yeah. I am going to move to assist um, Bones. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what I could do other than smash this thing with my hammer or use my teamwork power attack to assist, which is the um, uh, powerful display of faith granting them a plus two to their action and removing five stress. I have to spend all of my action points to do that. Uh, is this your uh, teamwork action feature? Uh, it says teamwork power attack. I think that usually costs teamwork points. Which yeah. Only have one of yeah, any okay. teamwork uh, power um, attacks um, Cost seven. Uh, uh, seven. Work. Okay, I apologize. Then, then I will just uh, smash it with my hammer. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. So, and it's a D eight for dread. Mm-hmm. That is correct. All right. Here is the dread roll. Ooh, uh, here oh. is my my strike, which is also a D eight. Uh, no bonuses. Um, wow. Woo. Nice. Meter okay. eight. Okay, so it just. Well, that's one damage, though, right? Or... Yeah, that's just, that's just a single damage. So. Against this power. Better than no damage. Better than no damage. Um, Okie dokes. So the Bone King is going to one step forward towards the Great Machine. Um, there is a portion of the great machine where there is an empty slot that looks like it could fit a D20. Uh, the Bone King is going towards that. Um, so that is one step. The next step it takes, um, it is, it sees you, Godric. No, it doesn't. Uh, you see the hearthstone begin to swallow a lot of the energy uh that is uh around it make me a spirit save spirit save against uh, the dread of a okay uh that's D6 for my spirit save. Four. Whoop -de -doo. And spirit save. Six. Not terrible. Not terrible. Um, okay, so you do take two stress. Two um, stress. And you are also considered vulnerable, which means you have a minus two to your defend rule. Which is neutral because I have a plus two to my defend rules. Copy that. Uh, it neutralizes. Uh, great. Uh, so that is the end of the slow turn. Um, Annika, you see the Bone King walking through um, this space. Um, with your feature, um, we'll consider it passive right now. Um, with the feature that you have that I gave you, in front of it seems to be the shimmering Reavers connected to the Bone King. The Beyond acts in a specific way to a lot of the creatures in the Aether, where if a parasite uh, within the Beyond attaches to a creature that is attached to the Aether, um, it will make it will basically make and render that uh, that creature invincible. Uh, you would need to strike at the reverse 
first. But, in the flip of a coin, in Godric's prayer, the reddish hue and the darkness surrounding you and the Lords of the Order immediately begin to blink. What was once crystallized darkness in a reddish hue illuminates a blue azul. And the Lords of Order lift up and see the Bone, uh, the bone King, the Lord of Chaos and the Lord of the Order all meet each other. And in the space where the Great Machine is, is a great rupturing as obsidian roots begin to take hold of this place and begin to fracture the zones around you. The beyond is forcing itself within this space. There is one missing Lord, one missing tenant of the Aether here, the Lord of Order. And that is where we are going to take our break. Woo! All right. Thank you, Max. We will be <clears throat> back in 10 minutes, everyone. Uh, we don't have yeah. a stopwatch, stopwatch running or anything, but about 10 minutes, we'll be back. Uh, it's 10.04 here in Los Angeles, so about 10.14 we will return. Thank you very much. Welcome back. We missed you. We missed you. We missed you. Indeed. Okay. Obsidian roots upend the zone that you're in. And in a just ear splitting moment, the water rushes in and consumes this area. If you remember, you're in the cranium of a titan below the last sea. There is no role to see if you survive. You all die. Cool. Oh. Good night. <laughs> your senses jolt as you reawaken in a moment of your senses popping, ears bleeding, and inhaling of water. And you breathe fresh air. I choke. Master at Arms, 1 AP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you all find yourselves um, uh, seemingly coughing up water that is non existent. You guys just are in just disarray as if. Wait, you did die. You find yourself in the same chamber you were. you were just in. But this is different, warped, decayed. The obsidian and flesh around you seem to pulsate, emanating a low, almost subsonic hum that you can uh, feel more than here. Spikes of obsidian jut from the ground like nightmarish brambles. Above all, the cosmic tree, Visu, standing sentinel over the realm of the dead. <clears throat> Among the decay and disarray is Ivan. Dressed in royal attire, he seems to ponder the fractured form of the great machine. You see, standing near it is are, three, are, are these three reavers frozen in place and the Bone King frozen in place. And you look above, the digital gods, the lords of order, are pointing at the Bone King frozen in place. See, surrounding the surreal vista, the scars and fissures that were created by the Bone King are still present. Max? Are starting to... Oh, you oh. froze for a couple seconds there. Wait, oh. we, lost, we lost you a minute. Yeah, we got... The right. fissures are still present. Yeah, the fissures are still present. The realms of the Aether and beyond um, are free opening. You hear Ivan say... When chaos and order fail, when all else seems dark, 
Creation is the last ember that can ignite a new dawn. And yet here I am. Here you are. Reflections in the shattered glass of reality. You see, he pops open his face to reveal a mirror. And through it, you see you. He's so boring, he doesn't even have his own face. On Earth, as separated as you all were, you drew breath from the comic of Beyond the Hunter. You don't know when it happened, or why it happened, or what caused it to happen, but you summoned Ivan in your belief and contempt for the world around you. He brought you together, sensing your imagination, sensing your belief. <clears throat> he sees the hearthstone on the floor near you, Godric. Can I grab it? You grab it. And you hear Ivan say, Give me the stone. Like creation really night. For all the fuss is about. <laughs> it's more than just a little fuss, Godric. I can put an end to this war of order and the resistance of chaos. Creation will restart it all. I can put an end to this world and start anew. Your world sounds a little... How would Arden put it? Boring? <laughs> yeah, it seems like uh, every uh, everybody that wants to start a new world, the, the hiccup in the plan is always they gotta destroy the world first. Look around you. Is it not fucked? Well, yeah, but you, that's because you, know, you bored I'll... it to death. <laughs> Arden. Hmm? The youngest of our group. Hmm. The child that allowed everything to go wrong. Shut your trap and listen to the adults that are talking. I got a better idea. Get fucked. That's no way to talk, Arden. Yeah, we may all look like adults, but uh, you know the truth. He puts up his hands. You tried to kill me before. Let me return that favor. <clears throat> and he opens his palms as obsidian grows to obstruct the terrain, creating a maze around you. You see his reflection in every black stone. We are re-entering combat. Are you going slow or fast? Slow. Slow. So we don't see him directly right now. It's Not directly. Uh, yeah, I'll do slow as well. Still on this same page, same map? Uh, different map. Yeah, okay. Roderick, yeah slow. slow. Don't see his face. Again, it's just this mirror, and through the mirror, you see yourselves. Um, okay. He is going fast. You can do this thing called mirror walk. You see between two points of the reflective surfaces of obsidian. He steps through and slashes at, um, I'm gonna say, uh, Annika, please roll me a d4. One, it's you. Two, it's Godric. Three, it's Arden. Four, it's Bones. Bye bye, Bones. <laughs> you know I deserve that more, but. <laughs> All right, he walks. Um, uh, through this, he walks through this mirror, uh, through this obsidian uh, root, and slashes at Bone before walking through another point. Um, Bones, roll a d10 against your defense. Remember, you are considered vulnerable. So this is. Oh, I'm sorry, weakened. So never mind. Never mind. That is not your defense. So I'm rolling a d6 for my yep. defend, right? Okay. Perfect. 
And then what am I rolling for him? Uh, it's a D8. Oh, I'm sorry, a D10. A D10. Okay. <laughs> okay. You take six uh, points of uh, damage as this dagger cuts through your back. Um, you feel this searing pain um, just course through your body. Um, the next three rounds, you are taking one additional stress, um, and then he walks into um, another portion of the uh, obsidian, and you hear his laugh just erupt. Am I right in so, thinking, Bones, that that six puts you at twenty? Yes. Uh, so let's spend a let's spend a teamwork point to keep Bones up. Nah. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Those that are going slow. So he, um, he's not visible right now? He is not visible right now. He is through... I, I see him on the map. <laughs> he is through... Um, uh, you just see his reflection off of the obsidian uh, glass that is around you. Can we, can we break that glass? Or is it... Uh, the man the destroyer. Get to it. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I, I'll go first uh, in order to, to do my roar for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone that is in your zone, which is everyone here, gets yeah. adventure die um, bonus, and then uh, Ivan gets a minus to your adventure die. Yeah. So w what? I guess, so are the portal. Are the portals obsidian, or are those just... We can't see those. You can't see those, but in the moments that um, the obsidian shards were... That were not around you, because um, he just summoned them, mm -hmm. they were not obsidian. They seemed different. A different aura. Uh, so what... I guess I don't want to waste my bullets just shooting that glass, but... Uh, I guess fuck it. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything cool I can do against help out here. Okay. This is going to be against D6 or the glass? Uh, well, actually, a quick question. The personal flavor, um, uh, once per day I can grant enemies the weakened condition. How long does that last? Is it just one round? It's just one, one round. Right, I'll save that for a more opportune moment. Uh, yeah, I'll just shoot two, two of the glasses nearby, like two separate ones. Okay. I have no idea how much damage it'll take. I'm shooting the obsidian bullet still, by the way. If that gotcha. Gotcha. So that's a D uh, against a D6 for the the pillars around you. Okay. Um, so my first one with the roll, the D4. That'll be a nine against... Oh, and I, actually that exploded. So... They exploded too, so hang on. Oh, it exploded again. It, oh my god, there it goes. Okay. I think one of the glasses is gone. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. They exploded too, so six plus one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So that's 20 to seven. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt, your obsidian bullets needed to meet a certain target number. To shatter. Oh, to shatter. Yeah. They spray and break the um, obsidian sh uh, pillars next to the one that you're aiming, allowing you the ability to see this specific portal. Great. Uh, I'm going to use my it. second shot at that portal. Then. Gotcha. And beyond it, beyond this portal, you see the great machine that is broken right here. Um, you have the hearthstone in your hand right now. Copy that. Would it take an action or an action point to give it to Arden? Uh, I'm going to say that's a simple action. Uh, Arden is right. We'll say, yeah, Arden is right beside you, so you can just give it to him. Okay. Well, then I'm going to take my follow-up shot on the, the portal. Because okay. portals are never good. 
Uh, in this case, anyway. Uh, so that's just a straight d6, which is a 3 versus 8 still? Yep. Hell yeah, spending my last imagination point, which sucks. You know what? I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take one stress. I'm gonna keep an imagination point, just in case. Copy that. You are able to disable this specific uh, portal. But you do see. Thank you. Max's face. My face. I'm there. God. Basically. No. You do see the Bone King, oh, Frozen. Oh, hey, look at him. He killed our fox friend. Well, he's low powered. Um, and Bo. And, and Bo. Right. Yeah, and our companion, our shipmate. I'm not happy about any of that of those. I forgot one other rift, because um, there are three towards the order. Anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. So that is there. That is Captain Godric's turn. Uh, uh, wait, no. I, so I hand Arden the the stone. Got it. And uh, the machine's over there, buddy. Now, um, maybe I need clarification here, but um, wait, wasn't it that Godric saw the machine through the portal? Um. Godric did not see the machine through the portal. Uh, basically, the same room that you guys were in also exists in the beyond. Okay. The beyond is the antithesis of the aether, right? Um, a realm of the of the dead. So, the great machine also exists here. It's just decayed and broken. Okay. Um, so it is it's... like it looks on the map. I just go through a, a tunnel to get there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, actually, do we want to put it in the machine? Isn't that what he was trying to do? He tried to put it into, like, a slot on one of the Lords of Order, I thought. I mean, like, the guys that were frozen in crystal. Is that right? He tried to, he tried to, he corrupted the, um, the Hearthstone. Uh, in your hand, it is back to, uh, a more cool, um, uh, obsidian color rather than the reddish, uh, color that was in the hands of the Bone King. Uh, he had tried to put it through the great machine, uh, attempting to basically assert its dominance and allow the Hearthstone to um, choose the path of chaos in this new reincarnation. Um, but right now, it's dormant and back yes. in hand. Okay. I am so yes. I am sticking with my original decision. I am giving the kid the uncropped Hearthstone and saying, hey, there's the machine. Copy that. I am spending an action point and one stress to activate through the cracks. Okay. And I am taking the stone and uh, <laughs> doing a double move with my light foot ability. Okay, one, two. That's Godric. Oh, bloop. Son of a bitch. Two. Yeah. Um, I can't reach the machine. Um, I went slow. So through the cracks is one action, and the movement is the other action. Yep. So I am done. But I am actually going to say I didn't move there. I moved there. <laughs> Just because of Big Ugly. I'm like, how did you do that? <laughs> I have magic powers. <laughs> Alrighty. Great. Uh, so that is uh, Annika and Bones that are left. There is a path that has been created for you um, uh, by way of Godric that allows you um, through. You do see Ishmael is also right beside you who was working on this uh, what you see is a teleportation device. It's finished, and he looks at each of you and says, "It's ready if we want to get out of here. I can take us back to the breadwinner." You guys go. I got this. Who's he talking to? Just everyone, or just everyone? Uh, I look at him. 
don't you want to finish this after what just happened to what was the fox girl's name? Kiami. Kiami. Yeah. He's like, I, 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 we will die if we stay here. Anyway. Wait. That, what if what if you teleport the Bone King back to the Breadwinner and we stay here? You're up ahead, Arden. Okay, but I can yell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, why do we? I, don't put the fucker on my ship. We don't need it. We're underground. We'll need it afterwards. Maybe. Anyway, Annika. Anyway. Yeah. Bone King is frozen in those portals. Um, I, I'm kind of confused as to what the best strategy would be. Bust up a, some more of that glass, destroy the portal, or go after the stunned Stone King or Bone King. Um, if you're asking out loud, I think our biggest threat is still Ivan, and we need to figure out where he's at. Because everyone else is frozen, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah, and Ivan's passing through those obsidian pillars, so maybe break those. Uh, yeah, I'll go back to that original strategy and bust up a couple pillars if I can. Okay. Um, I will say that there are um, three obsidian uh, pillars left after Godric's amazing roll, taking down uh, a huge portion of them. Go for it. Uh, we'll go after the nearest one. I still have Godric's plus d4 mm -hmm. on my strike. I'm going to roll that first. And then the dread is what? That is going to be a d8. d8. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah. You um, shatter it uh, to our left. You do have um, another action should you wish to uh, strike the other uh, pillar. Uh, if it's within reach, I would love to. Go for it. All right, so still with a plus on the D4 or just that first turn? That first turn? Uh, it's that whole entire round. Okay, so here's my roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's enough to uh, uh, crack and shatter it. Um, you see... Oh, yeah. in tumble from this one and land right here. A little bit closer. Um so you just like moves them a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> Bones. You can play that game. <clears throat> Alright, well I will also strike at a pillar. Uh we'll say the the pillars of this uh, this moment are gone. Oh, the pillars are gone. Wow, oh, I don't have anything obsidian to throw at those portals. What about some of the obsidian that landed on the ground when the pillars broke? There's mm -hmm. also Ivan right in front of you. There is also Ivan right in front of you. Oh, and absolutely fuck that guy. <clears throat> He's right in front of me, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you are... Inches from his face. That person, and he yeah. is that person. Okay. He's enough to be engaged with. That won't cost you any. Uh... Okay. Really small on my screen is why. Yeah, so um, I haven't been zooming in very much. But there you go. No worries. I okay. Bone and bones. Do a uh, shadow lunge. Or sh yes, shadow lunge. Shadow <laughs> lunge. Me two AP and two imagination, correct? Uh, shadow lunge is two AP and three imagination for stress, which I'm assuming you're gonna take. Well, the, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna spend stress, but I'll spend the imagination. Okay, that is plus three to your uh, strike. Um, because I'm getting some sort your... of disadvantage to that right now, right? Because of my trauma. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's at a step down disadvantage. Right. So one die yeah. smaller, but you do still have Godric's uh roar. So you yeah. To add your D4 to your roll. Oh my gosh, you are rolling a lot for this one. <laughs> so your original die 
was on a step down. Uh, so step down disadvantage. Roll the two, take the lowest. Add three plus Godric's D4. Okay. And originally it would be a D6, so I'm going to step down to a D4, correct? Mm-hmm. So two D4s. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. And that's uh, the adventure die and mine. Don't fall over. And this is against uh, a D10. So also rolled. Uh, was was that with uh, uh, our uh, Godric's adventure die? Yeah. Okay. Uh, plus three, so that gets you at eight. One of those exploded, right? Or you already got that? Four explodes. Yeah. Oh, the four does explode. So you can oh, roll that. Oh, uh, yeah. It does. Well. Okay. Uh, so that leaves you at. Yeah, every point helps. Yeah. A minor eruption. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Minor <laughs> eruption. At nine, because with your plus three uh, shadow lunge. Um, all right. Roll a d10 for Ivan. All right. Six. Hey, you beat it. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Nine is bigger than seven if I learned anything in school. That is true um, alligator yeah. eats the nine yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> um okay what did so, i do without you mia <laughs> great um okay so you uh you do strike at him and you leave him vulnerable so that is minus two to his defend um you see as he uh like stands up bones just goes uh to his back and just basically just shanks him uh uh, cutting into uh, his his back as he just growls. Um, okay, it is going to be his turn. Uh, he is going to touch the ground as these obsidian spikes emerge all throughout the um, all throughout the zone. I need everyone to roll me a body save against a dread of a d10 this is still the same round right so we have the roar uh correct correct thank goodness okay unless you already used it i didn't yeah body save against a d10 against a d10 oh. do we each roll the d10 or do we roll it one time uh each roll a d10 so the d4 does not apply now okay. it does it's fine. Uh, it does unless still. You use it, unless you've already. Used I did it. use it. I did use it. Oh hell yeah! Build mine. I somehow beat it. Oof! A tie. Yay! I got ten against one. Was the one yours? No, I won ten to one. <laughs> oh my gosh! I so exploded just on like, a D6, oof. and then I got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I won three to two. Yeah. Um, these obsidian uh, uh, spikes immediately emerge from the ground, trying to uh, pierce all of you. Arden, you step up and with a gust of wind are able to kind of just uh, fly upward as a uh, obsidian shard go up and just meet your face. You are able to uh, miss it and veer off to the left uh, to bypass it. Since I'm um, already flying, can we say it's literally the air pushed out, displaced by the thing as it comes up that I ride? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Bones, uh, you are that close to Ivan, and Ivan will not hurt himself. Um, so none of them come close to you. Um, Annika, you're able to... Uh, where your uh, mace is, the shard uh, shoots up and basically kind of pushes you um, uh, out, but you uh, kind of ground yourself and push uh, inward and uh, dive the spike straight to the ground. Um, and Godric, you're able to uh, dodge it. Um, all right. I feel, I feel like I'm more like a Homer Simpson drunken master moment. I'm just kind of oh. like... I love of, it. <laughs> they just come up around me. Uh, I love it. Um, all right. Is everyone going slow or fast? Go bones. I want to roof fast into Ivan's face. Fast, fast. Yeah, I think. Uh, slow. Maybe fast too. Roger fast. Pardon? Slow. 
flow. Okay. Fast, Godric, and Annika. Uh, I'll go first to the roar. Roar. Wait, no, I can't do roar and attack, right? Because that's now only one action. Uh, since you are going fast, yeah, it's only one action. So you, you can do either the roar or you can do the attack. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do the roar. Kick his ass, guys. Nice. All right. Well, I will step up to him and and yeah. What's his dread? D10. He's a D10. Okay. So here is my D4, D8. And his D10. Uh -huh. Okay. So that is a failure. Wait, no, you won. You won. Yeah, five to. Oh, three. sorry. Failure for Ivan. Fi failure for Ivan. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he has minus two because he is currently vulnerable, so he takes four damage. Um, yeah, you bring down the uh, the mace down to his face as he lifts up, attempting to do one of the thing. Just strike um, at the uh, the mirror. You see the mirror shatter, and in a split second, uh, Annika, you're able to see your old self through the shattered mirror, mm -hmm. a gothic version of yourself. Please roll me a trauma save. Trauma save. Um, what die is that? Mm -hmm. Mind. Okay, mind. Yeah. That's a D six right for me. And you said a drill. Oh, fudge. Uh, D ten. Okay. Excuse me. You have one point of trauma. Um, your body strike and shoot are currently weakened. So they are at a step down disadvantage. Um, okay. Uh, so that is Godric and Annika. Um, Ivan is going to go up now. Um, he is going to stand up, spread out his hand as these um, obsidian, uh, uh, this obsidian cocoon basically come around him and push you, Annika, and Bones away from him. I need you all to roll a defense against the, uh, this would be, sorry, your body against the defense because he's trying to push you away. The two of them, right? Not, not all. Yeah, Annika and Bones. So you said body roll on that, okay. Yep. Three, okay. Right, my step down is a four. Okay, so that's one. Against his his D10? Yeah, D10. He might get a one. Yeah, he did well, I didn't. No. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um wow. oh. Annika. Um <laughs> You are pushed back a space. Um and you do take 18 damage. What? As the obsidian uh, smacks you uh, in the face, you feel your nose break and you taste blood. Bones? Cindy, if you can roll uh, your body against the uh, dread of a d10. I did. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yep, I got a three and he got a ten. Oh, there. Oh, I see. You got a three. Yep. You got a ten. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that yeah. means he exploded. He exploded. Oh, he gets to roll again then. Mm -hmm. Does it even matter? At this point? Well, I think <laughs> a little bit. Saying. It a little bit matters. It a little bit matters. This matters um, how much, how much pasty I become. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you're just a splotch on the wall now. <laughs> you feel oh, man the obsidian break your ribs. You feel one of your ribs 
puncture your lung as you immediately just start to cough up blood and start just gasping for air, you are knocked out. You're gonna start to uh, make some death rolls um, in the uh, coming round. Um, Ivan goes and turns around and chases, actually, no, he's gonna chase after um, Arden and scream, but, and scream, <laughs> but the Bone King one screamed at him um, all those years ago that you all read in the comic. Give me the Hearthstone. What? I can't hear you. I'm flying too fast. Those that are going slow. Yeah, but he's our little shit. <laughs> um, we'll do Bones right now. Uh, Bones, how death works, um, you are going to be rolling your spirit um, against the... It increases... Uh, the dread increases uh, uh, throughout each round, but you're going to be rolling against a D... Uh, uh, sorry, D6. A standard D6. My spirit against a D6. Correct. Okay. So there's mine. There's Ooh. the other. Okay. You have succeeded. Success does not mean you are closer to being up. You will need to be revived by one of these fuckers for you to... Um, uh, yeah. It just means that you are not closer to death at this point. I have not I don't have a feeling. Pardon. <clears throat> so, um, light put, double move, get me to that machine, and I am putting the Hearthstone in here. Reaction. Ivan is um, going to do the same thing, do an obsidian eruption as obsidian erupts from the ground. Fade away uh, reaction. He has to uh, roll against my body die. Oh yeah, do that. Roll body against the dread. What's his dread? D10. What's his dread? Uh, D10. Wait, did Godric do the roar this round? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so it would be uh, minus his adventure die. Wait, minus his adventure die or plus my adventure die? Um, so you would get plus his uh, plus an adventure die. Right. And. Uh, Ivan's roll would be minus. Oh, so it's both. Okay. So I got a yeah. six, and then, I'm sorry, you said his was a D10, and what's right. his adventure die? The D4? It, it's just a D4. It's a D4. So D10 minus D4, it's going to be seven minus one is six. I matched it. And you beat, and so he loses an AP on his round as you escape from his grasp as he tries to do the obsidian um, eruption, you move faster and go towards the uh, the great machine. Um, that is going to be the end of that round. Um, does, does it cost me an action point to, to install the uh, hearthstone? Correct, which is where we're going into this new round. Okay. <coughs> you had two rounds to go towards the um, the great machine. You're almost there. And as you go place the uh, hearthstone into the great machine, you feel the hearthstone in your hand erupt in kaleidoscope display, splitting and reforming. Roll me a spirit save against a dr dread of a d20. Yeah. Wait, wait, I think I have something for this. <laughs> Does my D4 subtract from the D4? No, uh, no. no I don't have something for this. Arden, you vanish Fuck. with Hearthstone. Damn it! Inches away from the Great Machine. Can I throw you it? Split and reform and vanish from the beyond, and you land knees scraping the ground 
you see the digital titans fixing up the um, uh, the cranium uh, of the titan below. The water from somewhere down below escaping, allowing you to breathe. But you see that you're back in the aether. And before you, you see the D20 spin around faster and faster and faster. Those back in the beyond. Ivan is gone. You have no idea what happened, but you see a huge fissure in the space that he left. Arden or Ivan? Sorry, uh, Arden. Okay, cool. Thank you. But you do see anger contorts Ivan's face as he lifts up his hand and with the obsidian force open that uh, uh, it's kind of like a the symbiote where uh, it escapes from his hand. Uh, you see the obsidian um, grasp onto the rift and just force it open and reveal the aether beyond. Do I see that too behind me? Yeah, you see, you see it right next to you. He steps uh, he steps through uh, into the prior space where the gods of order and the lords of chaos are. Um, you see the the Bone King still in this space of the Aether, but in the grayed out version of him. Um, you see these two spaces are now merging. So we're here. Me and me and Ivan are here. Yep. Um, Godric, Annika, and well, well, we'll go to Godric and Annika right here before we go to the other scene. What are you two doing as you see Ivan step into the space, into the Aether? You see Bones behind you, dying. Which, actually real quick, Bones, roll me a d8 against your spirit as the dread of your dying becomes more eminent. Against my spirit? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is a failure. But they um, both explode. They both explode, yeah. So it could go either way still. Actually, yeah. Go ahead. Um, roll, roll it. All right. Let me. I'm going to do the uh, D. I'm going to continue the D6 first. Okay. It's 10. Okay, that's 10. All right. And we'll go back to the D8. Oh. Give it a word. Can't even use points this save. 10 versus 20. So, so that you're 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 seeing the light, whatever this light is. Um, two more failures and you're done. Right. So, Annika, Godric, what are you doing? Um, I turn to um, our buddy here and I'm like, can you save her? Save Bones. Ishmael. Yeah. Uh, he he rummages around uh, his his pack. Um, I don't have any ability to help. He reveals um, this uh, these two electric uh, uh, the stones when he sparks it. Um, uh, sparks of electricity just uh, come, come, come off of them and steps down uh, and places them uh, uh, to uh, Bones' chest and just sparks them trying to um, ignite it. Um, ooh, uh, Arden, roll me, roll me a control check. Actually, yeah, roll me a dread of a d6 against uh, Bones's Bones. What is your spirit? It's a d6. Okay, so d6. Me? Yeah. Here is the uh, dread and the spirit. Oh my gosh. Well, me and B. Uh, Ishmael successfully um, brings back uh, uh, Bones, though at just 19 HP, you get another um, point of uh, trauma, which that same trauma, it is still weakened, so you are just um, 
just more weekend. Uh, if you take any more, you're going to uh, increase into um, that uh, pool of trauma. But you're okay right now. Uh, but you are awake as you immediately gasp. Um, there is a flash of memory. Um, your parents, somewhere, you hear your mom's uh, voice. Cindy. And that's it. And you're back in the uh, in the realm of the beyond. Uh, Ishmael in front of you. The rift is still open uh, beyond you. Um, Annika, Godric, Bones, and well, I guess Ishmael. What are y'all doing? Uh, I go to the rift. Okay. Following the house down. As you step in, you and see- And Ivan, the shit. Yeah. You see Ivan and Arden staring at the hearthstone. It's captive, captivating. Inches away from the great machine, screaming wildly as it senses all three creatures of power. The Lords of Order, an inert Lord of uh, creation and a power hungry Lord of chaos. The hearthstone will decide as it has before Three tenants are in the same room, and the Hearthstone will decide one of them. But Arden, you who have done the calculations, you know that there's an option, uh, another option. You always know that there's another option, a fourth option somewhere. The Hearthstone can choose all three. Ivan's words echo from your time at Pineheart. Imagination powers obsidian you see memories of your journey of choices and sacrifices coalesce into a moment of clarity you start to see the connections how imagination is not just a tool for the journey but perhaps the key to its culmination the hearthstone is a focus a lens through which your will your will could be channeled arden you've done this before you use the obsidian dagger to seal scars the Hearthstone presents a question, and it's searching for an answer. Chaos, creation, or order. Or maybe, just maybe, the answer it's never considered is all three. It's inches away from you. What are you doing? I'm going to say <laughs> 1 to 5, creation. 6 to 10, chaos. 11 to 15, order. 16 to 20, all three. Oh, like actually roll it. I'm actually going to roll the hearthstone like a die. Grab it and roll it. More like throw it. A bowling ball. A bowling ball as you, as it rolls and literally lands on a 17 into that empty space within the great machine. The room feels as if it's, as if it's holding its breath. Time itself suspended in balance. Your decisions now will not just shape your fate, but perhaps that of all realms. And you have chosen all three. In a flash of light, the room stands silent. Particles of golden light fall gently around you. You see the hearthstone, the great machine, pulsing and breaking as if an egg. And from it, you see the D20. 
but in the body of a man. In a sudden whisper, Ivan is reduced to the die of variability. You see Ivan contort and grow smaller as he is turned into a D10. You see the bone, uh, the bone king in two different realms be forced into the same spot and it's just well become lessened uh, and is reduced to the die of unpredictability he is reduced to a d12 you see the d20 look up above at the gods of order the dice of greater variability the d4 a d6 and a d8 come from them. The d20 has always chosen one of the three tenets of this world, but it has never decided all three. You hear the hum of eternity as it draws the five other dice around itself. A d20, d10, d12, d4, d6, d8, spinning around it, around its head. And you hear it ask, What am I for? Fun. As if it could tilt its head, it looks at you. What is fun? Games exist from probability and the probability of life birthed me. From the man who dreamt of little wars to the creation of a world populated by people. Your world granted me options, granted me image, granted me material. What is this? look around the room is there some sort of landmark on the other end of the room over there uh From what opposite, are you trying opposite of where we are we're kind of in the center of the room though aren't we correct okay okay i'm, I'm gonna point to the entrance where we came in you see that opening over there I'm gonna, I'm gonna not use my wings, okay? You and me, we're gonna run towards it. This is called a race. Whoever gets there first wins. You ready? I am an immoral god, and for me, many worlds have existed. Huh? What, are you scared? It's fun. It's a race. very well um and it you see it shift into the position of uh somebody that's about to uh run roll a d20 against um your uh well your body <laughs> well no it's not bad it's good it's more fun for him if he wins He won. He won. And you see in a split second the uh, the body of this D20 just appear at the door. And no. just and stand there. Born from the imagination that exists of this world. You love to fly. You love to sail. You to fight. And you to enforce a more just God. Is this to be free? this fun for me to race you is this the purpose of the god that you have birthed i mean you keep saying this word god nobody else said that about you i mean i'm just saying it's a little rude as well. you 
you do not know this. The worlds that you know on your world have been birthed by me. the imagination of dreamers alike who deign to rule me. I am their god. I am the god of variability and probability. No, you got it backwards. They created the worlds. They just turn to you for some input on how things develop. And so I am order. I am chaos. And they are creation? I guess so. But, I mean, neither one of you is a god. Unless it's them. Because they create worlds. then I am just fun. You are overthinking it. You live. You exist. What do you want to be? What do you want to do? I am what game masters aim to be, the god of games. Mm-hmm. I you guys. desire the worlds. I desire to see probability exist. To see what you describe as fun. To see the smiles of players interacting in this world. In not this world. The world's beyond this one. Ours is but a simple one, but I exist in many, in many iterations that have been created. I thank you. This is your will? Oh, you wanna know my will? What is your will? I would like to leave. Here, this room, not like the planet. It was not what I saw in your heart. But if you wish to leave this room, then it will be so. Snaps his fingers and Artemis, gone. I was just about to try and move these guys into the conversation, but I guess they can do that on their own now. Arden has imposed his will on creation. What is it you desire? Oh, uh, how many desires can we have? I have a few. I see the desires of your heart. Well, you are a man of two worlds trying to set himself in this one, to become what he could not be in the world beyond. Yeah. So you wish to be established. I wish very much to be established here with my crew, bow and bones. Annika, if they desire. Uh, and I wouldn't mind uh, that Ivan guy and the bone team to just never show up ever again. They have other wills for this world, for the worlds beyond. Creation, order, and chaos will exist through me, through these. And he takes the D6 flying around. These are me. 
These are us. We are one. If your desire is to be established, then it will be so. And I will link your heart to this world. Yeah. Hey, can I have some more cannons on my ship too? That is a fun thing that you will need to figure out. Yeah. And if a die could smile, it would. <laughs> And as you laugh, <clears throat> here. What? I didn't hear that. As I laugh, what? As you laugh, you disappear. Oh. Annika. Bones. I would uh, like bones. to stay here yeah. with the captain and harden. a world of gods of demons Annika this world was meant for you you see God bound as someone who is a zealot you have not discovered the fun of what your life can be God bound can be one direction where you are bound to the wills of the deities but you can establish a more just god you can bind gods they are bound to you remember that you are gone yours is a heavy heart. It stoops down to you. <clears throat> yeah, I want my brother back. His spirit has already been taken. His spirit is gone. And I, I still don't remember the Aether, except for what's just happened past that point. Correct. Okay, then it doesn't make... Okay. <clears throat> then send me home. I have no reason to be here. I will do more than just that. For you. I have seen many who have chanted what was the Hunter's dream to capture many in this realm. I will close down the portal, but the rumor of the Aether will live on. Those that seek to go home will, and that portal will continue to be open to them. However, if you decide to leave, as you have just told me, you cannot return. Know this. Every echo of imagination that you have of this place, though fragmented and may seem lost in your head, will birth the very heart of games to come. From me will games be created, stories told to allow for people to exist in glory, a glory without pain. Such will be their gifts from you for imparting this meaning. None shall pass through the gates of Obsidian, but merely be keepers of the flame, watching for the eternity of stories that unfurl in the haze of the Aether we exist in. So with you I will ascend, to close the loop by placing myself in the annals of the Divine. One final ascent shall be made, and I will be that sacrifice. For the gift of purpose that your group have given me, I present you a gift. What you desire. No one knows what happened to Bones. No one knows what happens 
to the hearthstone. But down in the cranium of a fallen titan below the last sea, a D20 splits in a kaleidoscopic array and disappears. We fade to black. Godric, Annika, Arden. A final gift was given to you from probability. It was not a physical one, but a gift of experience. Map. What did the Lord of Probability see in your heart? What were you given in this final loop? And as we fade from black, what do we see? Um. So you're you're seeing what I like go back to, or we'll we'll cut like years down the road. Okay, so I guess you're seeing uh, somebody who, in one world, had no control over their life and their relationships around that they were forced to be around. Um, and here they can have a crew and a family, somebody, people that, that, that they want to be around. Um, like being a captain isn't necessarily being the, the leader. It's just being, it's just taking care of, of Godric's family. Arden? Um, I think if we are seeing Captain Godric on the deck of his ship, we are not seeing Arden on the ship, but we are seeing Arden in the sky, just above, being followed by one or two hundred other Hakan who all behave exactly like Arden, <laughs> except that they do whatever Arden says. <laughs> I am uh, I am the leader of an, a whole army, a whole faction of uh, fun-loving adventure birdmen. Uh, we are allied with Captain Godric in his ship, but he's a little too stuffy for us to be there all the time. Okay. Annika. <laughs> like, Steve and I are like, I'm going to say a wavelength. I was like, I will uh, form a kind of a new religion around the philosophy of uh, self-protection of the innocent, or protection of the innocent and yep. recruit acolytes uh, or, yeah, uh, recruit people to assist in that battle that uh, that good deed i guess and battles are fought some won some lost the years go by and the hawkins are able to reestablish their fallen kingdom as hawkins are at least in the realm of mithril um, constantly displaced but with through Arden's uh, chaotic leadership there is some order that is found in your creation Annika through the creation of your new religion you are able to reign chaos reign it in and establish an order that is whispered throughout Mithra. Captain Godric, through the creation of this faction that you have around you, this family that you finally have, you've been able to establish the order that goes out from them. You see their chaos, but you see their heart, and you can't help but smile. And while you will never know this, centuries will go by on Earth. 
and this cosmic story will spur the imagination of children on Earth as a comic is released of wayfarers that conquered the improbable. Many will grow up recalling the horrors of the pages they saw and the intricate lore that it held. Games will come out from these worlds and in a tiny home, dice will be constructed that will captivate the hearts of many to come. Generations will pass and in five different homes, somewhere many years in the future, friends will sit around rolling dice and telling stories birthing worlds within and outside of the aethers of reality. And this is where we close the final chapter in our tales beyond the Obsidian Veil. Thank you, everyone. Good game. Great work. Good stuff, Max. Thank you. Bye, Bones. <laughs> I tried, bye, bye, I tried bones. to get Bo back. Yeah. Uh, it turns out that Bones is actually telling this story to uh, her grandkids. Oh, Bones is the uh, <laughs> that guy at the end of 300. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, this was awesome. Um, Max, remind me tomorrow to uh, point out some things I, I, I noticed in the book. But um, the game is, is great. Thank and you. Um, yeah, great story. Great to play with everybody. This Friday, we'll be back for episode 19 of Shadows of Arconia 2. And then next Monday, Vieja Escuela Pulp, run by Mia and featuring a new character, played by Jason. Um, the following week will be Thanksgiving week in uh, the U.S. And we are not gaming either day that week on Monday or Friday. But after that, on November 27th, We'll be back for the second half of Neon Skies with Wylock. Um, so thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for playing. Thank you, Max, for creating an entire game book and running us through it. Uh, we will see you guys next time. Bye. 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 Hey.